A Slice of the Community is made possible by the support of the First Horizon Foundation. Hello and welcome to another episode of Slice of the Community. I'm Jerome Moore and today we're joined by Carlos Perti and Javon Jones, the founders of Nashville Black Market. How y'all doing? Good, good. Thanks for having us. Nah, thanks for y'all being here. You know, we got we to gotta talk about the empowerment of Black-owned business in Nashville. And firstly, congratulations on five years for the Nashville Black Market. How does that feel? Five years in business, amplifying and, and impacting Black-owned businesses in Nashville. It's just Middle Tennessee, because I know y'all travel too. Yeah. It's exciting. Um, I don't know, just the work that we're doing, it, it just, you know, motivates us every day just to kind of get up and kind of figure out, like, how we can kind of keep amplifying also like sourcing and cultivating new businesses. Um, I, we, we talk pretty much like all day, every day about it. So it's just, I, I think it's something that's really um, big on our minds right now, so. You know, I feel like it's a lot, a lot more to be done. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like we're just not getting started even though it's been five years. Yeah, so as far as like a lot more to be done, y'all are working with entrepreneurs, black owned entrepreneurs, like all day, every day. That's what y'all do. Yeah. What are y'all hearing from like the city right now from black entrepreneurs, black small business owners in the city? It's a, it's a lot. Yeah, uh, like yeah, tell yeah, us, unpack yeah, it a little it's bit. It's a lot of different perspectives, especially like businesses that are at the development stages and businesses that have been, you know, together for a few years or a multitude of years. So you hear a lot about funding. You hear a lot about scalability. You hear a lot about, you know, partnerships. You hear a lot about sponsorships. You, it, It's just so much, um, it, it's so much that needs to be covered. Yeah. Um, and I think that's like one of our, our parts is like helping these businesses navigate through the marketplace, um, but also kind of finding ways that we can kind of help them, you know, bridge the gap between whatever that they're missing. So like Jay's perspective might be different, but right. like these businesses are growing, they, they're profitable. They like don't sleep on these mom and pop businesses. They're million dollar businesses. And uh, a lot of the times they don't have the, the access to scale them or they don't have the access to, you know, have these multiple locations or whatever it is that they may need to, you know, continue their business to grow. And I think it's, it's a disconnect. It's, mm. it, it, it's missing there between, you know, the hierarchies and whoever, f you know, makes that channel and that flow because a lot of these businesses didn't get those recovery funds or those, you know, PPPs and different things of that nature. A lot of those businesses didn't have the access to them or didn't have the proper knowledge or education or, you know, paperwork for them to sign up and get it yeah. and, and access it. But also they just didn't have the connection that these other businesses or the counterparts that we, you know, have in business ha do. How about you, Devon? I'm looking at a different perspective. Like you said, uh, I may be, uh, doing so I look I look at it as what I've been hearing is a lot of inspiration a lot of uh, motivation that we're giving these mom and pops or these uh, young entrepreneurs or these business owners that's been around for a long time I hear a lot of uh, thank you a lot of uh, a lot of uh, just aspiration that, that that they give us yeah. to keep going because they're saying hey you guys had a marketplace that you guys started you guys are young you know uh, we had an event for four hours and I was able to make these type of dollars, you know what I'm saying, that's gonna benefit not only my business, but my family. So it's like, I'm hearing a lot of like success. Yeah. You know, a lot of impactful uh, uh, conversations and things like that, so. You brought up, uh, Carlos, you brought up funding, right? Mm -hmm. Which is important when you're talking about scalability and sustainability with any business, right? But we know there's discrepancies when it comes to black owned businesses and in, in, in their counterparts when it comes to finding funding, finding sponsorships, whether you're a small business or nonprofit, that funding thing is always disparities. Talk to us a little bit about that, of how you all have been able to kind of work with some of the small business uh, owners, black ones here in Nashville around like finding funding or even just doing the, the national black market, enabling businesses to, to make that extra thousand dollars that they may need in a month or five thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, 2021 to what is that? 2022. 22. We put over $700,000 back into the community. $700,000. Yeah, just by uh, circulating the black dollar. These businesses that we have wow. in our marketplace, month to month, or these multi uh, festival, you know, cultural festivals yeah. that we have, being able to empower these businesses, bringing people to the marketplace, bringing them customers, consumers, mm -hmm. um, lifelong business businesses are being able to kind of like 
scale their business. So we have businesses that come to our events that are able to get their own brick and mortar now, or they're able to, you know, continue to build their business. And I think that's like been our goal is to kind of figure out how we can kind of bridge the gap between those disparities and those things that these business owners are not having access to or being able to kind of create those proper channels through the people that we partner with that may have uh, uh, FDIC or, you know, these different banks or whatever the case may be. So I think that's been our goal is just to how can we continue to empower these businesses. I'm gonna ask you a different question, Javon. What are some resources specifically, especially when kind of funding, that just you all see that black owned businesses do not, are just not aware of? When it comes like, oh, I didn't even know like this was available. I didn't know mm -hmm. like I, mm -hmm. I could, I'm eligible to get this grant or mm -hmm. there's funding here. Can you talk, talk to us a little bit about some of that, those resources? It's a, it's a lot of um, partners that we work with like Urban League, Corner to Corner, okay. uh, Pathway Landing that hone in on certain different resources as part of their program. Yeah. And for, for them to work with us, we kind of are able to kind of and, uh, communicate that to the vendors or the business owners that, that wasn't aware of that, if that makes sense. What are the two dynamics that you see, especially with like new entrepreneurs that, that makes them succeed and then makes them maybe like fail? What are the two, some of some characteristics or dynamics when you all are working with these small businesses or just some people say, hey, y'all doing this, I just help me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what are, like what are some of those characteristics of like, okay, because entrepreneurship is not easy, no, right? And not. people see it and it look great. It look fun, like, oh, okay, they got, they doing their thing at the farmer's market or the fairgrounds, right? Yeah. But they don't see all the work that goes into it a lot of times. They just see like the end result. Talk to us a little bit about like those, those characteristics that you see, those traits that help some succeed and others not so much. I don't really see one failing. Mm -hmm. I just want, I see one learning slowly, mm -hmm. slowly than the next person. Uh, I feel like every, every step towards a, a, a business step is like a process, you know? So some might catch on quick, just like in school, you know, some might catch on quick, some catch on uh, slower or whatnot, might, yeah. might take them a little more time, but they still get there at some point. So, you know, I always tell them like, you know, as long as you keep that mind strong and your, and your business strategy and keep working on your business strategy to get to a certain point, to where point your level is, yeah. you know, you're gonna, you're gonna end up being successful. Right. Uh, as far as the characteristic of learning how to have a good setup at a pop-up shop or learning how to have communication, you know, being organized. You know, a lot of these business owners lack in some of these places because in their part of their life, that's what they lack at, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's a working, it's a working, it's always a working uh, consistent that's situation, correct. so. So, hey, uh, Carlos, in, in your own kind of way or form, what does it mean to be a black entrepreneur, mm. a black small business owner? What does that mean? If you had like a, a, a value <laughs> statement or a mission statement, like what does that mean? Um, I wouldn't say it would be like a mission statement or like a, I, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur just like any other, yeah. my, my other kind of parts. I just happen to be, you know, African-American mm. or I may be, you know, a different ethnicity or whatever the, the case may be with a minority owned business. but it's just the, you know, some, some of these businesses or a minority owned business or a black owned business, they might have been born in a, 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 a zip code that, you know, may make their business a little bit more lesser than the next business, or it may be, you know, their credit or whatever it is uh, upon their, you know, their presentation may make them, you know, slower to the next business yeah. or, you know, it, it's always been put in a box to where it's like, you know, a black entrepreneur, a black artist, black this, black that. And it's yeah. just at the end of the day, we're all the entrepreneurs and creatives and, and business owners. But what makes us different is, you know, the innovation of what we've been able to kind of create with the lack of access and tools that these other business owners are able to kind of, you know, obtain. And that's what always makes us a, a little bit more unique or it makes it like, oh, wow, that's a black owned business or, you know, you need to support these businesses. And I think it's been like a, a really, a, it, it was a really way, a uh, big wave after the, like the George Floyd, yeah. you know, a lot of people were supporting and, you know, kind of, you know, raising these businesses up and what can they do? Can we donate? Can we do this? And, you know, it kind of started to, to simmer down after so long of, you know, not being able to kind of, it, it being in the forefront, it started to just become this thing of where you're a black entrepreneur, you're a black business owner, and it just kind of labels and puts us in a box yeah. to where like, we're not able to kind of create or it 
kind of cuts us off at the legs to be able to kind of get other resources and tools that we may need as well. So, All right. I want to, um, you break up a good like time point that George Floyd 2020 also during the pandemic. You know, a lot of businesses were birthed out of the pandemic because of the need of necessity and needing a side hustle or just needing extra income or loss of employment, right? Yeah. Um, have y'all seen Nashville black entrepreneurs and business owners kind of bump up or scale up even during the pandemic? Uh, because, you know, it's thriving. I think I've yeah. seen some, you said it went up from, it went up like 15% or something like that from 13 to 15% or something like that, those stats when it comes to the number of black owned businesses now in Nashville? Yeah, um, I think the pandemic birthed a lot of creative entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of businesses yeah. were birthed during, the, uh, during COVID. Um, and I think it was a really a good thing, but it also kind of gave these people to kind of like be put on pause to be able to kind of, you know, whatever it, whatever it was in their life to kind of, you know, search for their talents and find those things that they've always wanted to do and what, what they were Credible at doing, but right. weren't getting paid for it to mm. do. Um, and I think it was a, I don't, don't want to say, I don't think it was a good thing. I think it was a, it was able to kind of give these people like the chance to kind of put whatever it is out there into the universe and see how it comes back to them. Right. And I think Nashville at the time was like ready for it, like this birth of like new entrepreneurship to where it was people selling stuff on Facebook or people selling stuff on Instagram or shipping yeah. their products from here to there or, you know, influencers or you just creating this product out of desperation and it, you know, shocks the world. Right. Um, I think, you know, it gave entrepreneurs the chance to kind of see, okay, I can do this too. I can right. create this or I can build my business and scale it from here to there. I think it even gave us the idea of like, we have to go to marketing, we have to go online, we have to make right. our products available for for everyone, but also right. be able to kind of teach and scale other businesses how we're doing it and give right. them a operating and processes and systems and stuff right. like that. So it, it put us on halt, but it also gave us the chance to kind of like open up new doors and see things that we weren't able to see because we were always in the ground. We're always focused and we always had this freedom of being, you know, out in the, the open without, right. you know, any quote unquote consequence, consequences. Mm -hmm. And I think that just gave us the chance to kind of like see, okay, these entrepreneurs need a chance to keep scaling their business. Yeah, hey. I kind of felt like I was like in the escape game. We was like in the escape game where it's like, we're gonna put you in this room, you're gonna have to figure out how to get out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you, it make your mind even more stronger yeah. when you're in a smaller, you know, Space, yeah, like it, it really like, you know, like you, you're tied up. It's like, mm -hmm. it, you know, and it wasn't anything nobody could do. And, it, you know, it was a time. Survival mode. Yeah, it was like much, a survival, yeah. survival mode, right, especially right. for these businesses, because imagine a brick and mortar location somewhere you go to every day or something. You, you, we deal with people. And so us not being able to have our marketplace it kind of like cut us off at the legs to where we were like, okay, what do we do? Like right. what, what's next? What do we, you know, like what's the next step to, for our business? How do you pivot? Yeah, like yeah. how do you pivot? And yeah. I think it also just like, imagine Instagram or social media stopping for 10 weeks. It's like, what would businesses do? Like, Get what? a billboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get back to television. yeah, it would go yeah, back yeah. to traditional yeah. marketing, yeah. guerrilla marketing. And so I think that's what it kind of gave a lot of people to understand. It's like, okay, everything, you, you got to value what you have at right. the moment, so. Um, in the black community, this black culture, a lot of times we always hashtag and support black owned businesses, support black businesses, right? Um, but a lot of times it doesn't happen consistently. Like it's, it's something tragic happens or it's a, some type of an event. And then like you kind of mentioned, it, it goes up and then it, it simmered down. How can we, or what are strategies that community can use, black folks or just allies, everybody, yeah. to consistently support black owned businesses uh, in Nashville? I'll start with you, Javon. Mm. I, think, I think marketing is big, just like putting it out there. A lot of people say, oh, I didn't know I was able to do that. I didn't know I was able to volunteer here. Or I didn't know about this right here going on. It's still people that don't know about the Nashville black market. Uh, and we've been doing well, it for five real? years. I don't believe that. No, I'm serious. Man. <laughs> and it's like we've been doing it five years, so it's like never stop. Like that's what I was telling the other day. It's like we need to think about going back to our roots on how we began to start and like going the the tr traditional way 
more than that, and doing a little bit of both, you know what I'm saying, balancing out to get the word out. Yeah. So my, to answer your question, just more so word of mouth and just more so getting your brand out there to realize that, hey, you can sign up right here to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. What about you, Carlos? What are some strategies that people can use to consistently support black entrepreneurs, black small-owned businesses here in Nashville? And not just do it, you know, like, I'm going to do it this one time because something happened. Yeah, 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 but yeah. something on a consistent basis to where, like, okay. Yeah. Um, honestly, shop. Shop with them. Support them. Yeah. You can repost their stories. You can tag people in their posts. Um, there's so many different ways that you can support without even have to, you know, spend your money. Um, it's letting your coworkers know, letting your staff know, or having your business sponsor something that they're doing. I mean, it's just so many different ways that we can support one another here in this community. And there's so many um, more ways that we're probably not even thinking about. It's just yeah. the collaboration uh, that we, we really think that, um, you know, the Nashville black market wouldn't be where it was without the people. And so if you don't have the people and you don't support those people, it, you know, it doesn't continue to grow. Right. Um, and so like that goes for the same thing with the people that support our businesses. If you don't keep supporting, like stuff don't, doesn't grow. Um, and that, that's really the key is supporting, like yeah. figuring out what way you can support. So if it's not money, supporting sharing. If it's not sharing, supporting telling somebody else about it, whatever it may be. Yeah you know, you have to kind of communicate that and you got to keep pushing it. And I think we also are trying to find different ways to engage with different communities and different people to understand, like, we're inviting everybody out. This is a, a, a festival, a cultural festival, and yeah. you should come and you should support, but yeah. also support after the event as well. Support the retail store, support these businesses on their websites, support, you know, businesses that are also brick and mortar locations mm -hmm. that are surrounding. Um, and I, I think it's going to take a lot more work within Nashville in general, whether it's tourism, whether it's, you know, us coming together and finding more ways to kind of support us as a whole. Mm -hmm. But I think it's definitely happening here in Nashville. It's starting to become this thing of like where we see it at the events and we're like, oh, wow, we yeah. weren't expecting that. Or, oh, wow, we yeah. weren't expecting that repost or that, you know, tag. So we we're appreciative of what Nashville is becoming. What, and so speaking of Nashville, let's, let's look at Nashville like as a system, right? Yeah. With different governing bodies. I know like the mayor, mayoral administration is real like important as far as decision making when it comes to like how we spend our dollars economically and who that impacts. Um, what are some strategies the city as a whole and these entities and these bodies, what could they do to better support black owned businesses and making sure they can have that impact on the city, especially all this economic growth, and be a part of that, yeah. and get a get a, a whole like big slice, you know what I'm saying, of the of the pie <laughs> that's happening, you know what I'm saying here in Nashville. Um, it's so much. Yeah, name uh, them, name, yeah. name them, go back and forth. <laughs> because like, because I think like like one people need to hear this and know yeah. and know where to start. Also, but like from a citywide thing. You know, if you're not, if you're from here, right, you're like, well, we already know kind of the areas that have been historically neglected. Yeah. But we see this growth that's happening in those same areas. Yeah. yeah. I, like, mm -hmm. if I don't have a brick and mortar, how can I get some of that business? Well, we know this yeah. stadium is happening, right? Yeah. Like, okay, I don't, I'm not a construction worker, how right? But how can I, but yeah. how can I be a part mm -hmm. of the Titans and what they're doing? Mm -hmm. And so, like, what are some systems that can be built, or what are the things that systems that are already yeah. built intact can do yeah. in order to support black-owned businesses? So. Yeah, we, we've been knowing about like Nashville's buzzing economy, uh, downtown, honky talk, like it's a billion dollar industry. You know, they talk about 22 million made every day or whatever, whatever the, those numbers what theoretically right. are, but 74 million for, you know, these events that are coming through. And so like we need a piece of that. I think yeah. Nashville, black Nashville, whatever, part of Nashville, like we need a piece of that. It doesn't just need to be centered or focused around just one area when, you know, whether it's, you know, country music or, you know, these events to where it's Music City this and Music City that when Fisk is Music City Jubilee, we need a piece of that. We need, we, we all need a piece of that to where we can figure out how to circulate it because 
if we have these bigger events that are coming into town, we can look at different cities and strategies that they've done where mm -hmm. New Orleans really eats during, you know, NFL when the Super Bowl is there because it's the city. They have to, you know, make sure that these are put in position in place. But we can also look at different cities like Atlanta where they create the belt line or they create these different strategies to where they're helping these black owned businesses succeed right. and not just, you know, give a dog a bone and, you know, you got to come, you know, right. like we, we need more things set into place to where we can orchestrate and build and continue to build. We need places for incubation. We need places like, I, I, it's like I don't want to give away too many ideas yeah. and stuff because it's like they need to come and talk to us yeah. because there's so many different things that we could figure out and we could do right. that can like really enhance and empower our economic, you know, we can stimulate it. We, yeah. could, we could really do some really big stuff right. here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just giving the chance to to make it happen. I mean, just to pick it back on what you're saying, like we said not too long ago, a couple minutes ago, that from 2021 to 2022, $700,000 was circulated through our black business, through our events that yeah. we do once a month. Yeah. Nine to 10 times out the year. Yeah. Seven hundred thousand dollars, and yeah, it's like if we, had a <laughs> if we had a warehouse, or if we had a place, and that's Black Market had a warehouse or a place that we can do this on the seven days a week. Yeah, or you know, it'd, it'd be, be crazy. way more money yeah. and way more, you know, the tourism would be yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. come here anyway just to come to the events, but also like. Just imagine all our counterparts yeah. that are, you know, uh, you know, people that we are in business with, or people who have nightclubs or restaurants. Mm -hmm. Like they're also missing a piece of what Nashville has as a whole right. too. So like, it's a disconnect somewhere. Yeah, but then also what I love about that is one, it's not about y'all, right? It's about truly the amplification of mm -hmm. other black owned businesses. And it also gives them a consistent place to sell if they don't have a brick and mortar, but it gives a consistent place for community from all ethnic groups and walks of life right. to come and support if they want to right. in one big hub. Right. And so I'm gonna go ahead and manifest it. I think, you know, 2027, 2028, whatever that, that new dome stadium is finished, doing a, a natural black market inside the, the Titan Stadium will be amazing. Yeah. Or the soccer stadium, yeah. you know, yeah. this, you know, so I think those things are definitely possible and we can make happen. Yeah. Um, I want to kind of pivot into the success stories, right? Yeah. Um, if you all could share just like one success story each of, of a business that worked with y'all and y'all seen kind of just grow and blossom and like they started just coming in, didn't know if they could do it, but then was able to evolve and guide it in, you know, due to the national black market or just through the mentorship or advisement of you all has been able to do great things. Yeah. Um, we always tell the businesses start small but start now like yeah. get it together and figure it out like because your ideas are priceless um so like some of the stuff that we like I know I've seen is like like a mom came to us and was like hey like I, w I made my brick and mortar rent like I made my money like I'm <laughs> able to pay for my kids food like yeah. this month I'm good like wow. thank you for that like I appreciate y'all continuing to 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 do this um, and it just warms our heart, warms mine for sure, just yeah. to be able to kind of like know that we're like this connecting piece to like helping other businesses, but also like people and community as well. So yeah. it's like, it just gives us joy to, you know, kind of consistently be able to bring people together for a good reason. Right, how about you, Jermaine? You got uh, a story? You yeah, I like, to, I like to hear, uh, I like to, like a shout out to a, a business owner named Kevin Covenant. Covenant. So he's from Memphis, Tennessee, and he creates, uh, during COVID, he created uh, like uh, different type of cocktail drinks and things like that. So he wasn't really unsure, and he came out to the black market. And ever since we had the black market, you know, he, he, he wants to be a part of it every first Friday that we have it. Yeah. But he makes like triple, triple, quadruple of what, uh, of income, you know, with, with us having an opportunity. He also gained clients to be able to do weddings be able to right. do uh, prom events and, uh, and a different variety of situations. So now he was able to quit his job to do this full time. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask both of you this, like kind of like the the ending question, right? The cap it off. So I really want y'all to think about this. Why is it important for Nashville to support black owned businesses? And if we don't, what happens? Y'all take 30 seconds a piece. Why is it important? Why is it, why is it important to support black owned businesses in Nashville. And if we don't as a city, what happens? It's it lose, it lose. Why is it important first? It's important to, 
it's important to support black owned business because it's important to, to it's important to support any business that's mm. in the world. Mm. Uh, when you got a, a creative mind that someone may take time out to, to take a chance on doing it yeah. and it's successful and it's like you, you, you giving hope to somebody, you pushing yeah. more than just supporting a business and they get made, made they, and they're making money. Right. You giving, it's so many people that get depressed or have anxiety over them thinking that I set up at a place where I put my talent into, in front of someone right. and they walk right by me. You know, right. it's, it's, it's like it, it does more than just supporting, you know, right. finances. It's, yeah. it's supporting mentally, you know, you being here and having us on here. Right. You you took your time out you to have these questions for us yeah. to be here to not, you know, elevate your, your platform, but right. also give us a chance, an opportunity to grow our business. So 15 seconds. It's important to support black owned businesses because they need the chance and opportunity to grow their businesses just like everyone else. Well, look, man, I want to appreciate both of y'all. Keep doing what y'all doing. Keep uh, empowering Black-owned businesses and empowering lives and empowering community, all right? Uh, I want to thank all the viewers at home for tuning in. Thanks again. And uh, that's your episode of the Slice of the Community. Slice of the Community is made possible by the support of the First Horizon Foundation.